Okay, so we're going to be doing fast recall of presets. So that means like VIs, uh, different plugins. So let's say we've got a logic session with five tracks, nothing on them right now. Um, we'll go to the first instrument track, and I'm going to hit my macro for my first preset that I've saved. Um, does it way faster than I could click through? All right, let's do the second one. Okay, same. Uh, it's got a drum kit there. Let's do number three. Okay, man, it's zippy. I love how fast this goes. Okay, number four. Okay, and now for number five. So essentially, yeah, it's just got all the, the instruments with the levels and presets in as I left them. Um, so we'll open that up. You can see you got some Spitfire stuff, got a drum kit, got some sound paint. Um, and then over here we have, uh, yep, string library, even have the mics uh, set as I saved them. So um, the way you do that is you go down to save a channel strip setting. And what that's going to do is open up a file, and it's important that you kind of have a naming system in place here. I've got a file, and um, if you ever can't find it, you can show it in Finder if you need to rename things or move stuff around. But um, anyways, let's move on. All right, so next let's get on uh, automating some sends. So I'm going to use bus3, which creates an aux track in Logic. And it'd be nice if that aux track could just come preloaded with the reverb that I want. Um, so that I could send everything else to it. So um, what I'm going to do is show it in the main window. Um, this is because contextually for the macros to work, I need it in the single mix view. Um, so I'm going to use a preset that I saved earlier. Let's just hit the button, see what happens. Boom, Valhalla, just as I wanted it. Um, so yeah, this is going to work similar to the other tracks. You just save a channel strip setting. I've got a uh, user preset set there, but yeah, you click save this channel strip setting. And then uh, it, I find it easier to use folders because then uh, when you're searching for these later, they just they stay a little more organized. All right, so next up, we're going to be working on mastering chains. So on the stereo out or the two bus, um, I'm going to basically show that, reveal it in the main window, and then go back to my single view. There it is. So it's leftmost. That'll make my macros work contextually. They need those coordinates from the leftmost side of the mix window. So uh, here I've put in um, an EQ. Uh, you can put in whatever you want, obviously, but I like to um, use my macro for clearing all the plugins to get a clean slate if there's already stuff there. And then let's use one of the presets I made earlier. So um, it's going to zip through that, boom. And you're going to see Fab Filter. We have some Pro Q there, got a little bit of Pro Compressor there, and some Decapitator. Um, if we just go to the second preset I made earlier, again, loads very quickly. Um, so we've got a couple of different things there. Pro C, got some uh, limiting. And then on the third preset, I uh, have a little bit of some spread, fresh air, and a limiter. So the way that you do this is similar to all the other ones. You're saving channel strip settings. And again, I can't stress the importance enough of making a folder of your stuff because that'll be easier to disclose when you have pop-up menus and then looking around at things in Finder. And next up, it would be nice if there's just a quick way to have all of these go to the same same bus, right? Just same amount of send level, at least like something nominal to begin with. So I'm going to use a macro that I made earlier and quickly assign bus 3 to all these instrument tracks. Um, let me just clear all the sends out with the button I made earlier. There it goes. OK, so I'm going to select lasso, uh, lasso all the tracks that I need. OK, you can see they're all selected. All right, and if we come back and press the macro for assigning uh, the bus to all the selected ones, let's see what happens. All right, so not only did they all go to bus 3, but they all went to minus 12 dB, which is what I set um, in the macro. And I'll show you how to do that in another video a little bit later. But it just kind of speeds the process up, and um, to have instant recall is huge. Now, um, Logic is not as integrated with Soundflow as Pro Tools, so you do have to get a little finagly about pointing it to the right thing. but um, yeah, I mean, being able to do that in just like a single click is uh, such a time saver rather than having to click through every single one of those. Okay, and for the final magic trick, what I'm going to do is fly in a number of instrument tracks, all with VIs and so assigned and EQs the way I want them. So you're watching a macro do its thing. It's going into patches, uh, finding the summing stack that I wanted, and then I'll, I'll disclose the contents there. Um, 
this is a major time saver. If you have like a sketch template or you don't want to make a separate logic template for everything, you just want to fly in a couple of tracks with presets, cannot recommend this enough. So um, in another video, I'll get into how I constructed all of these things so you can use them for yourself. That way you can make your own macros and just spend less time kind of mousing around logic and more time zipping around logic and getting back to the fun creative stuff.